back to all it's in austin texas six five on the road is it really on the road if six five is usually in austin texas that's true all right it's we're, we're on the road we're the austin convention center at the zoologist uh convention uh fascinating company um that a lot of people are just learning about a lot of people have been using for a long time and as in all things technology right now the big story is ai it is ai and we're so happy to have a head sorry the director of research at zoho labs Rom is here from Soho. Thanks so much for joining us. Lots of news today Absolutely. going on, but the AI strategy, it just became the last like 18 months. Yeah. Rocket ship with so AI. they like you. Yeah. No, yeah. they care. Everybody, <laughs> but everybody needs it, but they don't know how. Yeah. How do we start? Talk to us about some of the things that you're doing there. Well, uh, enterprise AI is a very different ball game. We have seen the consumer world take off with AI. I mean, you get consumer grade large language models that can help you write your essays, that can help you plan a vacation. But what does it have to do with enterprise? I've always seen enterprise technology as a late mover and it takes the advantage of the late movement. We see the AI moment coming to the enterprise right now, yeah. uh, but not without its own set of challenges. I mean, limited amounts of data, very sensitive information that can be your competition, you know, that can be your competitive advantage. Now, how do we make sure we get the highest quality of AI predictions with the limited amount of data sure. that we have? And that is where Zoho specializes in. We've always been a privacy and a security first company. We apply the same principles to AI, uh, get the maximum accuracy with the limited amount of data that you have. Well, and I want to talk about the, the limited amount of data. The yeah. limited amount of data you have is because it's customer data. Yeah. And the customers are not as big as, say, the internet. Yeah. which is what the large language models most of us have encountered are, are trained on. Absolutely. So you're, it's almost like you're using the small language model. Yeah, that's right. We use the small language models. In fact, we call it contextual intelligence, where we mm. contextually combine models. I'm willing to license the phrase small language model to you. <laughs> I'll make you deal. I think I've heard that before. Oh, dang <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so the way we work is... Uh, one, we have been having a lot of narrow AI models, models that can do only one thing at a time. Say for instance, a sentiment analysis model for customer support emails cannot do sentiment analysis on customer support chat. So one model that does only one thing. Now when these LLMs became big, what, what came is models that generalize very well, models on which you can plan a vacation on, models on which you can build a diet chart and so on. But in the enterprise, you really don't have that much of data, but you need higher levels of accuracy. So Put these smaller models, narrow models, wherever possible. But I'm not brushing away the advantages of large language models because they have this ability to generalize very well yeah. and they have an emergent capability which these narrow models don't have. So we want our customers to get advantage of, the, of both the worlds, in fact. So use narrow models wherever possible. And when you need the emergent behavior, bring in a small model if the data warrants. If if it needs to be more emergent. But that also requires you to know what you're doing. Now, I don't mean know what you're doing like there's fools operating at, at, the, at the gears, but I mean, I think a lot of what is happening with uh, AI at this point in, in you know, 2024 is yeah. people experimenting with what it can do. Yeah. So a narrow language, a narrow uh, application of AI um, is sort of harder because it's narrow and you don't really know what you're not yeah. doing yet. Yeah, and, 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 and the challenge is, I mean, how do you imbibe that into your everyday enterprise process? I mean, there is a workflow that goes through multiple departments that needs approvals, and where do you put in AI so that it comes in at the right place? In, in a nutshell, I would say, we've been talking about process automation for a decade now. AI is decision automation. Can you automate the decisions for you backed by your historical data? Mm -hmm. And AI is just statistics powered by historical information. Mm -hmm. You know what is normal at a given point in time, thanks to all the learning that these AI models can do. So successfully imbibing that in your everyday business workflows is going to be really helpful. One of the things I heard you say this morning in the media and analyst session was that Zoho's, you talked about its commitment yeah. to principles that matter. You just mentioned one of them, context, contextual, truthful, privacy focused, value driven. How do these tenets, if you will, guide Zoho in delivering AI that really truly benefits the 100 million users you have now. Yeah, so let me walk you through an example. Now let's say we are we have been using uh, optical character recognition model to automate your expense expenses that you submit on a business trip to your finance team. So now we have- so OCR. read the receipt. Yeah, so, so receipt, click a picture, it extracts the information and sends right. it up. So this has been around for like four or five years now. Sure. These are narrow models where- Concur, ramp. 
Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. yeah. So you do that. Now what happens next is hundreds of receipts end up in an admin and it's his job to or her job to actually look through it and approve it or go back, ask a question to the employee on why this was done. Now there is a lot of context here. Now let's say I head the marketing for a particular region and and let's say I book this convention center with my corporate card. And and the system knows that, oh, Ram Prakash, when he goes to this region, he puts all these bigger expenses on this card. Now, let's say I go to a different region and, and it's just my food and stay in flights. And, and each organization has a different travel policy. Let's say hotel rooms cannot exceed beyond $200 a night or whatever. So there are so many contexts where you're hyper-personalizing this expense automation based on my role, based on my location, based on my team, and at the same time, based on the event that I'm traveling to. So put all these together, that makes it a very contextual AI thing. Yeah. And ultimately, your mean time taken to approve an expense report comes down by. Oh, dramatically. Dramatic? Yes. 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 Well, it's it, what you're describing from a context perspective is so important. And you talk about hyper-personalization, you know, and we expect that in our consumer lives. Yeah that we can do any transaction, whether it's a ride share or e-commerce, and the experience is going to be relevant, hyper-personalized yeah. in a secure private way, yeah. um, but relevant to us. And, and so that, that consumerization is bled over into our business lives that we want the same, we, we demand, it's not a want, it's a, yeah, demand, it's a demand from customers across every industry, I imagine, that there's not, there's not one industry where that yeah. demand is gonna yeah. be there. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and we see that. And, and uh, with enterprises, the data becomes very sensitive. Yeah. Now, let's say your expense report, your your OCR engine that processes your expenses, is 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 subsidized by leaking all the data. And and I can see that a lot of your company employees are spending with Starbucks. So maybe it's an opportunity for another coffee shop to go run a marketing campaign. It it should not work that way, right? It seems yeah crazy. I mean yeah because your Personal data, I mean, I don't pay for my search engine, I don't pay for my social network, but I give back a lot of my personal information. But the challenge is... That's how you pay. Yeah, that's how you pay. Exactly. And, and, and the problem is, see, the my smartphone knows that I'm broke. My smartphone knows that maybe I'm borderline diabetic, but it does not stop it from showing fancy milkshake ads at 11 p.m. in the night, <laughs> yeah. pushing me toward, or it does not force me to... I mean, it, it, it keeps showing ads uh, to upgrade my uh, phone to the latest one. So you see the difference, your data is your data and it should be working in your benefit. Maybe yes. it should push me to exercise more. Maybe it should push me to, okay, it's okay, your phone is still good. Maybe don't go for that upgrade, but it doesn't work that way. Now, now the same thing cannot be applied to the enterprise because that's your competitive advantage. And we at Zoho, we've been very particular on our privacy stance, not just with AI, with everything we do, we, we have uh, I mean, right from the days we started, we didn't have ads even in our free plans, and, and that's how we work. So we apply the same tenets to AI, and that is what makes us so unique in this field. I think another thing that's unique is, and this is my perspective as a public markets, U.S. stock market yeah. person, but the fact that you're a private company, yeah. and you had your approach towards AI, at least what you say your approach to AI is, is we're not trying to put AI in front of our customers. We're just trying to get stuff that works better in front of our customers. I'm paraphrasing. And, I th and I'm thinking about uh, the massive criticism Google has gotten for not having its own chat GP and not having it, which it yeah. is now, I guess, but but for not having an AI strategy and AI strategy, it's, it, it's not a, what do customers want? And you guys just can skip the, we have an AI strategy uh, part of things to just go right to what the customers need. <laughs> yeah, I mean. And I think part of that's because you're a private company. Yeah, we, we do a lot of unorthodox things. In fact, the decision to host on our own data centers wasn't well received when we did that. I mean, why don't you go go with an AWS or why don't you go yeah. with an Azure? But when you play the long game, the decision to build offices in tier two, tier three cities didn't really start off very well. But today here we are, most of our workforce is in tier two, tier three cities, stopping urban migration. You guys have been in Austin for a long time. And now McAllen? And now at McAllen. Yeah. McAllen is our biggest growing uh, office uh, in the US. Our CEO himself lives in a remote South Indian village called Tenkasi. Yes. We're like four hours away from the nearest international airport. Right. So. Uh, we are very, very unique company. We yeah. believe in playing the long game. Staying private has really helped and we can go fail with our experience. So, I mean, 2011, I started the first AI research as intern and any any big company would have possibly gone and acquired somebody to do it or 
got in a bunch of PhDs to get started to do right. But I was just a fresh programmer out of college and I got the opportunity. Yeah. And and here we are. So a lot of things might sound crazy or unique when we start. But I have seen over the years the conviction has really paid off. Very well. And that's one of the things that Shridhar talked about this morning was that conviction. Yeah. We've heard it yeah. from every guest we've had on the program today, customers. Raju was even talking about it. Um, and it, it, it's one of those things that, you know, I always like to understand the culture of a company and you hear about it. But there's, and Corey and I have been talking about this too, there's a uniqueness here yeah. that isn't just unique in saying so, mm. it's authentic. And I think that we've we've had that message reinforced. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure it's reinforced in the partner community. But how uh, you know, in the last few minutes that we have here, mm-hmm. walk us through. You've been there a long time. The evolution of that of the company, where that philosophy to stay private, to grow organically, has been maintained as the company has grown. Hmm. So uh, it is a motivation, right? It is building that technical know-how, and uh, you know, taking your time taking your time to get things right, understand how it, I mean, you you work 10 months on AI, you are an AI expert, <laughs> right? So give that engineer the time and space to get things up to speed. So we we run a lot of unorthodox projects. So for example, we are, we are investing in things like, uh, generally GPUs, people talk about AI, people talk about the video processing, gaming and all that. Yeah. But we use a lot of GPUs for our database acceleration workloads. And we find that it's relatively greener to throw in GPUs than uh, hundreds of CPUs on databases. Right. So very, very unique. And and these experiments might fail. A public company might not be able to do it, but we have the liberty. We we start small, we fail fast. And that has really helped. And, and we fail fast. And only when it scales... See, 2011, I was the first intern who started AI. And it was only in 2015 I got my second... Uh, Kali. So, taking things slow, yeah. Uh, yeah. failing fast has really helped. That's awesome. Ram, thank you for joining us on the program and walking us through what you're doing from a research perspective in labs, how you're helping customers embrace it on a, on a pretty quick pace, doing it securely, doing it privately, and the democratization of, of access. We appreciate your insights and your time. This has been a great conversation. Pleasure is mine. Really appreciate the opportunity. I enjoyed it. We have one last look at what's happening here in Zoogholics and with some of the best analysts from 6.5 and, uh, and from Futurum Group. Really get a sense of why this matters. We're going to have that for you right here from Austin, Texas, 6.5 on the road right after this.